worship. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Headed for that jubilee yonder in the sky. Well, what a day of singing. What a day of shouting, shouting on that happy morning when we all shall gladly rise. What a day of glory. To that jubilee oh, 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 what a day what of singing, singing What a day oh, of shouting, shouting On that happy morning When we all shall rise What a day what of glory. glory Glory, hallelujah glory When we meet our blessed Savior In the earth the sky now, When with all that heavenly host We begin to sing Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join that song. With them we shall be praising Christ to ages long. Heaven's jubilee. Oh, what a day of singing. What a day of shouting. Shouting on that happy morning when we all shall gladly rise. What a day of glory. Hurry, hallelujah, glory. When we meet our blessed Savior in yonder in the sky. Now I said, oh, what a day what of singing, singing, what a day oh, of shouting, shouting on that happy morning when we all shout our God to God's what a day what of glory. Glory, hallelujah, glory when we meet our blessed Savior in the Stay standing for prayer. We want to greet you and invite you tonight to just open your heart. We're thankful for what God is doing. And I believe the revival is on tonight. Our prayer rooms were full. We were crying out to God. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 126, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And you know, we've been sowing. We've been sowing some tears. Thank God we've been seeing some reaping too. And I believe it's not done yet. I believe God's got more to do tonight. So we welcome you into the service. I understand we've got folks watching from Tennessee. We are thankful and we welcome you. We have folks from North Carolina that are watching tonight. We welcome you. And if you're from any other state, just let us know. And hopefully you all know you're in Ohio here tonight. Most of all, we're in the presence of God. Let's join together in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight. Oh, God, once again, we come hungering and we come seeking for more of Jesus than anything else. More power and more love, more of you, Lord, in our lives. And so, Lord, we pray that you would make a visit tonight in a very special way. We pray your unction tonight upon the preaching and singing. And we pray that you would crown this service tonight with someone getting saved. Yes. We give you all the glory. Yes. Father, have your way now. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Remain standing tonight. We're going we're gonna to sing our sort of our theme song for this revival meeting. God's going to send revival all over this land. land, all over this land, get ready, God's gonna send revival all over this land, we're gonna be marching to victory with power in our hand, God's gonna send revival all over this land, where two or four are gathered in his name. Said it would be right here in this very room. All of us agree that He's the only mighty one, and we need 
his power to stand. We believe God's gonna send revival all over this land. All over this land. All over this land. Get ready. God's gonna send revival all over this land. We're gonna be marching to victory with power in our hand. God's gonna send revival all over this land. With fire out of control, sweeping across the plain. God's gonna pour down manna just like a thunder shower of rain. A mighty rushing wind will blow when he waves his mighty hand. We believe God's gonna send revival all over this land. All over this land. All over this land. Get ready. God's gonna send revival all over this land. We're gonna be marching to victory with power in our hand. God's gonna send revival all over this land. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. God's gonna send revival all over this land, all over this land, all over this land. Get ready, God's gonna send revival all over this land. We're gonna be marching to victory with power in our hand. God's gonna send revival. God's gonna send revival. God's gonna send. God's gonna send. God's gonna send revival. All over this land. Praise the Lord. While traveling through this world of sorrow. If 
upon His promise you depended on wings of love. You'll soar away. I wanna know more. I wanna know more about my Jesus. Yes, I do. Yes, I wanna know more about my Lord, my blessed Lord. I wanna know more about that mansion, heavenly mansion. I'm gonna receive as my reward. different. I want everybody to sit down, please. Okay. We're going to do a song. We've, been, we've only done it one other time. And uh, since we've had a lot of folks that have gotten saved this past week, we just kind of want to recognize them in just a little bit. And so we're going to do glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Okay. And it, 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 on the day that you were saved, I want you to stand up. Now, when, once you stand up, I want you to stay standing up, okay? So by Sunday, everybody ought to be standing, amen? So we're gonna, let, let's, do, let's do it like this, okay? Yes. Well, glory, 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 somebody touch me. Glory, 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 somebody touch me. Touch me, I know it was the hand of the Lord. Here we go. It was on a Monday. Somebody touch me. It was on a Monday. Somebody touch me. It was on a Monday. Somebody touch me. I know it was the hand of the Lord. It was on a Tuesday. Somebody touch me It was on a Tuesday Somebody touch me It was on a Tuesday Somebody touch me I know it was the hand of the Lord It was on a Wednesday Somebody touch me It was on a Wednesday Somebody touch me it was on a Wednesday, somebody touched me, I know it was the hand of the Lord. It was on a Thursday, somebody touched me, it was on a Thursday, somebody touched me, it was on a Thursday, somebody touched me, I know it was the hand of the on a Friday, somebody touched me. It was on a Friday, somebody touched me. It was on a Friday, somebody touched me. I know it was the hand of the Lord. It was on a Saturday, somebody touched me. It was on a Saturday. Somebody touch me, it was on a Saturday. Somebody touch me, I know it was the hand of the Lord. It was on a Sunday, somebody touch me, it was on a Sunday. Somebody touch me, it was on a Sunday. Somebody touch me, I know it was the Somebody touch me, glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me, I know it was the hand of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Getting gooder and gooder. Tonight's offering is our regular tithes and offerings. We want to thank everybody for supporting the revival this week. Our love offerings for our speakers totaled $1,400. So we're thankful for that. This coming Tuesday, a food pantry truck will be coming. So if you could come out and help unload it at 9.45 a.m. for the food pantry this coming Tuesday. We want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And... Uh, a couple special spoken. I, I was talking to Jerry uh, Benj about Megan. Megan Ward is in need of our prayers. She is facing a real battle with cancer. And uh, she needs God to intervene. Yeah. And so let's pray. Also, um, I've been getting some messages about a pastor friend, Gerald Rudd. He's extremely ill. And we need to pray for Gerald tonight. So there's a lot of concern there. So if some of you know him, would you come and pray for him tonight? We have many on our prayer concern list we want to continue to pray for. But you know God's able. Jesus said in the gospel according to Mark, in the 11th chapter, he said, What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. I will tell you what, you put faith in prayer, in God's word, and all things are possible with God. So as we go, Lord, in prayer tonight, perhaps you have a, a need you'd like to share, sister. All right, let's pray for them. All right, let's remember this one tonight. Unspoken. On your hearts, let's pray for souls tonight. Yes. Let's pray for the preacher. Right. God will come and preach through him tonight. I'm going to invite you to come and gather around these altars as we seek the Lord together. Let's all stand if you would. Brother McCarty, if you feel able to come up here, we'll pray that God give you the strength to lead us in our prayer tonight. You've got someone in your heart that's, that's lost, unsaved. Come tonight. Let's pray for them. And may God's will be done through this revival. It's been by the grace of God we've been able to meet here. And he has blessed us. And if he wants it to continue, he's going to have to show us tonight. He wants it to go forward. So let's pray tonight. We're thankful to be here tonight. I had a rough not last night. Rough. I've been, uh, I have Agent Orange, and I don't know where that's causing me problem with my stomach, but we just pray, God, tonight, we're not worried about self. I'm ready. I'm concerned about these that's got cancer. Those that's got the cancer of the soul is what I'm really worried about. It'll send you to hell. So tonight... When we pray, pray earnest for your family, your friends, and those who have been mentioned. And most of all, pray for him to preach the word of God, which I know he will. But we need that anointing with the word. You can't separate the word and the spirit. They're together. Heavenly Father, we come against Satan. Ever imp out of hell, we rebuke him. We anointed the the Lord posted this church a few months back. He's not welcome in this house, in God's people. This is my family he's dealing with. Oh, he's not even allowed to say anything. If we're saints of God, we rebuke him. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, tonight for a great move of God for those that's waiting in the hospitals, at home, sick tonight. There's people in the congregation tonight that are not feeling too well either. And God, we know that they come out to hear the word. They didn't come out to see a reed shaking in the wind. They came out to hear the anointing from God pouring out of a vessel. God, we ask you tonight to bless each and every one that come out. God, we come out of a horrible pit into the marvelous light. What a beautiful kingdom we're in tonight. And this kingdom is forever. 
God, we're glad tonight, though this world is shaky. Uh, there's nothing, no, it's uncertain everything. Uh, we see the scoffers and mockers come. Uh, they don't know what gender they are. They don't know what uh, the tomorrow holds. Uh, if they did, they would change their mind. Uh, God, we live in a world where there's chaos, uh, threats of wars and rumors of wars. Uh, they were coming out of the woodwork. Uh, every imp out of hell, they're working. Uh, they know that we're living in the last days. Uh, we, we see people on all hands. Uh, their hearts are almost filling from them. Uh, we see all kinds of uh, destructions. Uh, devil coming in, killing people with drugs and alcohol uh, like we've never seen before. Numbers out of sight. Uh, the world and the leaders, uh, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, they're, invi they're inviting uh, the devil to come in. They want power, money. But tonight I want more of God. Uh, I came out tonight to hear the Word of God. I came out to pray for my brothers. He anointed with the Word of God. Come forward. I'm glad to be in God's house. Uh, I love my pastor and his wife. Uh, I love the saints of God in this building. Uh, Tonight, God wants us to have something tonight. If we don't open up our hearts tonight and let them feel, uh, we'll walk out like we came in. Uh, I want to be blessed coming in the door and blessed going out the door. I want God's blessing in my life. Uh, I want to count for something. God wants to bless everybody tonight. He wants to be their God. He wants us to be his people. Make up your mind tonight if you're going to get all the way in. Or get out. There is fun for a season in sin. But if you get in God's kingdom like I'm in it tonight, I'm in for the full race to the very end. Uh, and God said he will wipe away my tears. And tonight I'm thankful to be here tonight. Thankful to feel something below my collarbone. Eight inches. Uh, it's the wheel in the middle of the wheel. And the oil of the Holy Ghost moving up on me tonight. Thanking you every moment for allowing me to be here. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
You're a good, good father to you. about this song this morning and uh, I didn't have the words to it and we couldn't find them so we're going to attempt this tonight pastor <laughs> attempt. <laughs> so uh, attempt. you pray for us <clears throat> well there ain't no grave
let me would see him through. So when the walls began to shake, all their chains just fell away. They cried, Behold our God, for he is in the midst. He's here, church. our store. He's in the valley we walk through. Where two or three are gathered in His name, He'll be there too. When you feel so all alone, He is standing next to you. He's with us now. that second verse again into the prison they were thrown Paul and Silas weren't alone they knew that God was there and that he would see them through so when those walls began to shake all their chains the me He's in the midst of our soul. He's in the valleys we walk through. Where two or three are gathered in His name, He'll be there too. When you feel so Bless the Lord. What a wonderful week it has been. I want to thank, thank each and every speaker. I think they're all here tonight. And we appreciate each and every one. Well, I, I just want the speakers tonight to stand, the preachers of this week. Would you stand up? Let's, let's thank God for each one of them. You know, we started off last Sunday night. It's gone pretty quickly, hasn't it? <clears throat> you know, a two-week revival is not out of the question. <laughs> they do go pretty quickly, don't they? Well, you know, we came out. I, I, nick, I hope you know, this will be the last time I say this. But we nicknamed him the Young Gun. He come out firing, chasing away a lot of the enemies. And then uh, Monday night, and he asked me this morning, he said, what's my nickname? And I got to thinking about, you know, really Monday night the revival train got going. So he's the engineer. And then Tuesday night, you know who I'm talking about. He's a lit fuse. Man, when he goes off, you know it. He's the firecracker. Thank God for Brother Jack. And then Wednesday night, thank God for Brother Brian. He's the gentle giant. He's even killed, but he speaks and people listen to him. Well, Thursday night, Brother McCarty, buddy, he brought the thunder and lightning, didn't he? He's the thunder and lightning. And Thursday night, I'm sorry, Friday night, we had, we had a meal. It was served up by the colonel. Yeah, he brought us a real meal, didn't he? He sure did. He said he wants to get him a white suit. We might have to look for one. And then tonight, what a privilege. 
I have called him the wise one for many years. He is a true soldier of the Lord. He's battle tested. If you look at him real close, he's got some scars. He's even displaying a little black eye tonight. He said he was in prayer this week in the middle of the night and he wrestled with the devil. And he woke up with a black eye. Tonight, he's going to give the devil a black eye. I believe that. He is a prophetic, he is a prophetic preacher. There's not many left anymore. Now, I'm not talking about somebody that claims they have a higher inspiration than the Word of God. But he preaches the Word with a depth. He loves the church. And he has continued, after his helpmeet has gone on to be with the Lord, he has continued to faithfully serve God. And so we welcome Brother Denzel tonight. Last time you preached here was Good Friday. We'll give you a little bit more than 10 minutes tonight. So would you come and just unburden your heart to us? Let's welcome Denzel Brandenburg tonight. We taught the Word of God on Paul and Silas. He got the vision. God told him not to preach in Asia no more. There's a man that knew what the Holy Spirit and the leadership meant. And when Jesus come preaching the gospel, he can, did not commit himself to all the people. And the reason he didn't commit himself to all people when they, he came preaching is their faith. Their faith, amen, wasn't real. There's three faiths, F-A-I-T-H, apostrophe S. There's a human faith, which the world claims. They believe Jesus is the Christ. They'll tell you that. And they'll also tell you they believe God loves them. You talk to my children, born and raised right up in the church, they'll tell you. I believe in God. Amen. And I believe there's a devil, but they're not saved. And see, we're not getting off the territory of the devil too much when we just believe. I believe that when you truly believe, it'll move you to an altar of prayer. It'll take the stiffness out of you and proud, proudness. It'll take, it'll do that. But when you truly believe from the heart, the inner man Amen. It'll move you to an altar of prayer and you'll never be the same. Amen. And so we told on Paulus and Silas and they didn't get thrown in jail for preaching the gospel. See the Roman Empire, amen. They would throw you in jail for proselyting. And so you know the story. They beat them. And they got thrown in jail at nine o'clock. But see, Silas was with Paul and said, now I thought you had the vision. Paul said, I know I'm right. And God told Paul, there's a man over there that needed to be saved. So they went over looking for a man. And that Paul was a wise master builder. That man knew how to build the church of God. And so when he started over looking for a man, he met a woman named Lydia. She was the first, first convert of Europe. And out of her life, she built a congregation. And I don't know how many hundreds of people were saved under her testimony. You see, that's what the rich man, amen, had on. He had a purple. And that was one of the things the Roman soldiers loved. They loved that purple dye. And so, amen, Lydia got saved and her whole family and then, amen, after that, Paul and Silas took off. And amen, they met the woman with the divination spirit. And she was going around, amen, witchcraft. And she was going around, amen, saying, these are the men of the great high God. These are the men of the high God. These are the men of the great high God. Well, most churches would have accepted her. 
Amen. That's more than just believing he's Jesus. There comes an experience, amen, deep in your heart. So Paul, amen, just turned around and he said, come out of her. And she come out, and amen, the devil come out of her and she got saved. So that makes two. And amen, so they threw him in jail and Silas looked at Paul and said, now, listen here. What you've done, Paul, is we are called jailbirds now. I thought you said there was a man over here, amen, that God told you that he needed saved. Well, all of a sudden, amen, there was a great earthquake, and it shook the jail, and the doors of the locks spoke open, and there was a man Paul come looking for. And he fell down and got saved in his old household. Now, how many looking for a miracle like that? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He is the same. And I'm right behind that. I'm going to say this. There may be sin in the local congregation, but there's no sin in the body of Christ. Amen. She's pure. She's holy. And it's up to the pastors and the church of God preacher to keep her clean, to keep her holy. Amen. Because we're living in a terrible time. And when you speak about holiness, you speak, some people, Greek. Man, we're living in a day, amen, you don't know what to believe. What you're going to see. Our world's in trouble. But when the world is at the worst, the church will be on top of the mountain. And she ain't coming down to the lowlands. Amen, she ain't coming down to any uh, hills. She is on top of the mountain. Amen, they got an experience, amen, that's brought them out of the world to live in the world for the world. So I want to say tonight, this message that I got tonight may give you nightmares. You may not sleep at all tonight. Come on, we have, we have got warm sunshine and hot syrup when we preach about the love of God. But there's two sides to God. Hey man, you stir the anger of God up, you got something on your hands. Hey man, that's what we want to look at tonight. We're not going to preach on the love of God. Well, every one of you, if you're saved or unsaved, you believe there's a God. Hey man, but real belief in Jesus brings an experience. Hey man. So I want to say tonight, in Daniel the night chapter, we're not preaching out of there. We're going to go into Matthew 24 chapter, but I want to say some things before we preach the message. Out of Daniel, the ninth chapter, it's the seedbed. It's a seedbed, amen, of the literal Jews going back to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. It also lets us know, amen, Hey man, we're living in a world that 99% of the religious preachers are preaching a thousand year reign on the earth. Now I know where I'm at and I know where I'm going. Hands off. Come on now. See, we got to take it serious tonight. Out of his own words and out of his own mouth, the blind will lead the blind and they'll all go to hell. So we better sit straight up in our seats and listen real good. Amen. I want to say tonight, amen, we're living in a world, amen, a thousand year ring upon the earth. Where the kingdom of God is not seen with the physical eye. When Jesus was born, they thought he was going to destroy the Roman Empire, sit on the throne of David, and be their king forever. They missed it 100%. Amen. And Jesus, amen, in Matthew, the fourth chapter, in the temptation, he turned down a literal kingdom. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. Amen. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's righteousness. It's joy. And it's peace in the Holy Ghost. And you can't lose your joy without losing the Holy Ghost. Joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Joy is not happiness. Amen. 
Happiness comes by changes and chances. But when you got the joy of God in your heart, brother, I'm telling you, you got a gift of the Holy Ghost of God. This whole uh, amen preaching to people that's got uh, frowned faces and amen can't hardly stand the message an hour long. Amen. I've been tailed. I've been marked. Amen. He preaches too long. Well, I've got something to say. And I got it right from the director of the Holy Ghost of God. And if you got the Holy Ghost, you won't worry about the time. You'll worry about your soul. Amen. So I want to say this morning, by seeing him, by the grace of God, Antichrist is going to come and make a covenant with the Jews. And in three and a half years, he's going to break the covenant. Amen. And going to set up a kingdom on the earth. Tut, tut, tut. Ain't no truth in it whatsoever. Now, I know what's going on on television. And you watch it. How many watch TV in the new religious program? You better hear and understand the voices that you hear. Because there's many voices in the world, but there are none without signification. Come on, any old religion ain't no good. But true religion is the visit of fallenness and widows and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. So I want to say tonight, amen, and the Christ sitting in the temple. He's going to make a covenant with the Jews and in the middle of the week, he's going to break it. The covenant, that's what they teach. Well, the word make and break ain't in Daniel 9. And the word Antichrist is not in Daniel 9. Amen. Now listen to me carefully. I didn't get this from the Seer Roadbook, uh, Roadbook book. I got it directly from the Holy Ghost. When you put 45 years in the preaching of the gospel, God's going to give you something, but you got to take your hands off and let God control you and lead you and guide you to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. It's God's church. Amen. He paid the price for it. He came down. And amen brought a church, the city of God. But everybody won't leave it down here. They want to box it up and send it back. It ain't going to help you if we send it back. The church of the living God is a city sitting on a hill that cannot be hid. Promise you something you can't have till you get, amen, leave this world. Tut, tut. That don't fortify me and you for the circumstance that we live in today. We need a now gospel. So I say today by the grace of God, amen, the word make and break ain't in the book of Daniel. The doctrine is false. Jewish priority is out of the question. You hear what I said? Jewish priority is out of the question. Listen to me tonight. God has no respect to a person. Unless they come through the door, they can't get in. I am the door by me. If any man in the right, he'll go in and out and find green pasture. So you might as well get your eyes off the literal Jew. They missed it 100% and them the one that killed him. I'm going to get to that later. So the Bible lets us know, amen, they're expecting a literal kingdom to be set upon the earth, and John the Baptist got his head cut off for that. Jesus, they killed him because of that. And that same old spirit is still running around all over the world. So I want to say this evening, by the grace of God, I want you to turn your Bibles, and I hope you got them, in Matthew 24, 1. Amen. That's where our reading will be mostly tonight. Matthew 24, 1. We thank the Lord. Do you like it so far? Well, let's go get it. Let's get it out there. See, amen, it's written in the book. But you're going to have to take the Holy Ghost to get it out of the book and put it in your hearts. Amen. Without the Holy Ghost of God, we don't have a message. 
What are you all standing for? Sit down. Pray to the Lord. Did you tell them to keep standing? Huh? We'll read the word. I may read another hour. Sit down and rest and relax. And take your shoes off and amen rubbing on the carpet. Hey, hey man, come on now. I don't need you to stand up to preach. So the word of God lets us know in Matthew 24, 1. Hey, man, Jesus went out. And it's a terrible thing when he moves out the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So the word of God lets us know in the teaching of Jesus, we got a new temple. We got a better blood. We got a new covenant. And by the grace of God, we got lively stones into the kingdom of God. In 1 Peter, the second chapter, amen, as newborn babes, you're a lively stone. God don't have no dead babies. No, they're all alive tonight. Amen, but you got to smack them every once in a while to straighten them up. Amen, so I want to say tonight, he went out. Departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. Now, I want to make one statement again tonight. Christians are born. Disciples are made. You know what a disciple is? A follower of the teachings of Jesus. And there's a lot of them that need that. No, you ain't going to make it on your own. I know what people say, Sunday schools were little kids. Well, that's what you are. My little children, that's what Jesus calls you. You never outgrow the teachings of God's eternal word. And brother, we got a serious old condition in the church. Why? People are not desiring to grow spiritually, spiritually, spiritually and become a giant in the church of God. We need some spiritual giants. So I want to say tonight, the Bible lets us know, they came to Jesus and said, look at these beautiful stones. They had their eye on the natural. Amen, look at these beautiful stones. And Jesus just stepped back, amen, and said, you see all of these stones? There won't be one left upon another. Amen. Amen. But we got new lively stones. We got a new way of living. Temples of God who've been born of the Holy Ghost. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Got a testimony on the heart. And when service time comes, you'll find them there hungry and thirsty after God's eternal word. So I want to say tonight by the grace of God, now let me go on. And I, I tell you, you know what I am. I'm a preacher about an hour, I guess they say. But down Tennessee, I don't have a problem. They stand up when I preach. So I'm just going to take my time because it may be my last service. That's the way I look at it. I told them when they prayed for me tonight, it's been a wonderful trip. Amen. I wouldn't give nothing in the world for it. I'm hitting 83. Who give me 84? Hey, man, it's been a wonderful trip. And it's the greatest thing I ever found in my life. Amen. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And brother, I'm telling you by the grace of God, I'm just as hungry as tonight as I was 40 some years ago. It lives in me. It's a part of me. And so I say tonight, amen. And Jesus said to them, you see all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when. And I'm glad he told them. And I'm going to tell you. Tell us when shall these things be. Amen. Tell us when shall these things be. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. And I'll not go deeper into that. But the end of the world come on the day of Pentecost. That'll get you thinking. If you read your Bible right, read it by the Greek translation, the end of the world means a consummation of the age. We've had the Father's age. 
We've had Christ's age. Now we're in the last dispensation, the Holy Ghost dispensation. And there ain't no other after that. All they knew, amen, was the then known world around Rome. That's all they knew. You shut me up on it. But I want to say tonight, by the grace of God, at the second coming, it will be the end of all things. There's not no two more comings. There's one future appearing of Jesus. Amen. And some preachers got him coming back two more times. Some got him come back three more times. Tut, tut, tut. There's one future appearing of Jesus. And when he comes again, it's over. So I want to say tonight, the Bible speaks of two tribulations. Amen. Two tribulations the Word of God speaks about. And so, amen, the Bible speaks about 24, 21. And then shall be great tribulation, such as not, not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be again. Now, the other tribulation is St. John 16, 33. In the world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He didn't overcome it for himself. He showed you how a man could live with the Holy Ghost in his life. Through the grace of God and the power of God, he condemned the world. And he showed, if you ever come on to me, you're going to have to come to me. So I want to say tonight, by the grace of God, Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And he will never, 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 never dwell again with temples made with hands. Now I'll let that sink in. And when you hear them preachers on TV, you better shut them off. Because there ain't no truth in it whatsoever. And amen, if you're looking for a kingdom to come, come on down to the altar, we'll pray. Amen, we'll put you right in tonight. Christ will put you right in tonight. Amen. So I want to say, in the 70 weeks of Daniel has been fulfilled by Jesus. And the Bible lets us know in Matthew 24, 15, Jesus said, Amen, this is the abomination of, de uh, of desolation taking place after the 70 years. Amen. Jesus fulfilled that last week. But we got post, uh, people that's postponing it. Putting it out in the future. No, no, friend. Amen. Everything he came to do, he done it in his first event. And so the Bible lets us know in Matthew 24, 21, Jesus called it a great tribulation. Not, as such, not since the beginning of the world. Verse 3, they asked Jesus, when shall these things be? And I'm glad he told him. He said, when you see, amen, the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, when you see, well, you never will see it. It's already passed. How about now? Matthew wrote to the Jews. Amen. He only wrote to the Jews. Luke wrote to the Gentiles. And the Bible lets us know, he said, when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, verse 15, he lets him see, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Well, there was no New Testament then. There was no Bible then, only by the law. So, amen. Amen. Only the Jew could read it and go to the law on the Sabbath. And the priest would get up and read it. But there ain't no way you can read it because there wasn't nothing written on pen and ink until A.D. 50. Now I got you thinking tonight. Let's sit, sit quiet and just take it in. Amen. Whosoever readeth. Readeth what? Amen. Written under the law of Moses. There wasn't nothing written on pen and ink until Thessalonians. 
Come on, let's take Peter. I show you a man when he's really called of God. He'll study and he'll study and he'll study. And he'll feed you if you let him. God can't feed nobody if you ain't hungry. Come on. I get him call every two or three weeks. Brother Bramber, what are we going to do? We're starving to death. Well, he didn't call nobody to go out to the golf course and pray two days a week. Study, study, feed the church. And God will multiply the church. I want to say tonight, amen, there's no New Testament Bible at this time. Only the book of the Old Testament. And they, and they knew what Jesus was telling them because they were literal Jews. You know the scripture. He came to his own first. And they received him not, but as to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even that they didn't believe on his name. I'm a full pledged son of God tonight. And so the Bible lets us know, verse 16. Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. This is only written to a people that were in Judea. I don't think there's a literal Jew here tonight. But you're a spiritual one. Hey, man. You're a spiritual one. But the Bible lets us know, amen. We're going to learn something. Amen. So he says here in verse 20, pray that your flight not be on the Sabbath. Now let me widen out a little bit. How about 9 o'clock? We'll let you go home at 9 o'clock. Amen. Pray that your flight not be on the Sabbath. Amen. The Sabbath is on a Saturday. Amen. And so it remember the Sabbath and keep you holy. No, sir. Amen. We can't keep our Sabbath. But the Ten Commandments wasn't written to the Gentile. It wasn't for all times. Brother, I'm glad Jesus nailed that thing to the cross. Amen. Amen. I'm glad it's finished about the Sabbath. The Lord said in 1 Corinthians 15, Jesus is our Lord and he is our Sabbath. Amen. They had rest one day a week. I'm about to shout. We got rest seven days a week, 365 the days a year. How come we got rest? Jesus is our Sabbath. And amen. They said, don't let no one go out the door from sunset Friday till sunset Saturday. And there was a man went out and broke the law. He gathered six, come back, and they went to Moses and said, here's this fellow, gather six on the Sabbath, and he went to God, and what God say? Stony. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't you glad you ain't under that? <laughs> I'm glad he nailed that thing to the cross. Oh, yes, oh, yes but we still, we still got people clinging on the old shadows, the old law. I'm glad the shadows has passed, and the reality has come. Amen. So remember the Sabbath. Let's take it apart a little bit. The Sabbath was given to a particular people at a particular time, at a particular place. But thank God, amen, when they nailed him to the cross, he said it's finished. Concerning the prophets, the law of Moses, and the book of Psalms. I'm getting kind of weak. I got to settle down. Man, it's burning in my bones. But I don't know if I can get it out. So I'm glad, amen. The Sabbath was given to the literal Jew only. They had a big fight down here at Hamilton somewhere about two years ago. It was taking the, the sign down the Sabbath from the church. Well, Lord, 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 we don't need a sign. We need a reality. And the reality has come. And he come through the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's the one thing we need the world needs today. So I say amen. The Bible lets us know in verse 28. Catch it. I'm going back to get the reality of it. In verse 28, amen. The eagle was the Roman in Sigmund. Verse 28. Listen to what he says here. Amen by the grace of God. Wherever the carcass is, there will be eagles to gather together. Now we're going to take you back to the Old Testament and show you without a doubt who the eagles are. But I want to say tonight, hey man, there's two women. 41st and the 41st verse of Matthew 24. Now here's what we want to see tonight. Be very careful. How many believe the Apostle John had his head on Jesus' breast? 
He wrote 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Amen? And that, Bob, them's the last books of the Bible. John was on the island of Patmos. He was sent there. They were going to kill him. And amen, they were going to put him in the oil and boil and kill him. Well, amen, God brought him back and said, John, be don't discouraged. You're going to come back and peep the, preach the people, tongues, and nations. John come back and wrote 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. And your last books of the Bible. The Bible lets us know in verse 40, Matthew 24, verse 40. This is what he says here, by the grace of God. There shall be two in the field. The one taken, the other left. Amen? Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one taken and the other left. Sounds like a rapture, don't it? <laughs> well, we're going to kill that thing. We've already been raptured. Our rapture, a rupture, their rapture. Come on. Amen. They go so far as saying, amen, how ignorant can you get? There'll be two in an airplane. How many ever heard him preach that? I heard a man on the He's foaming out the shame. There's going to be two in an airplane. Two in the car. Hey Amen. One going to be taking the other left. What you going to do with the car? Kill somebody else? You're getting it. I know you are. What is he teaching two women grinding out the mill? Well, there's a true woman. She's the bride of Christ. Revelation the 12th chapter. You'll find that beautiful woman. She's clothed with the sun. The New Testament. The moon under her feet, the Old Testament, and a crown upon her head are twelve stars. The twelve apostles of the Lamb of God. Hey Amen. There's your church. There's your pure woman. She's pure. She's holy. Hey Amen. She's sanctified. She's got the power. And what we need to do is let it be turned loose. Now we got another woman. And I mentioned something a while ago. John laid his head on Jesus' breast. Did he not? Amen. And so you go to the 17th chapter of the Revelation. Amen. You'll find a woman. She's called a whore. Come on. Amen. And the angel told John, sit still. I'll show you the judgment of this great whore. That's what he told John. What do you mean she's called that? She'll seduce you. She'll seduce you real good. She's worse than Jezebel. Amen. She'll deduce, and that's what the Bible said. And John marveled at it. John thought it was a great religious move. And the angel said, why did you marvel? John. Now here's the man, filled with the Holy Ghost, wrote 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. It was so deceptive, that false religion just about got him. And it's after you. Come on, they ain't killing us physically, but that old devil's after your spirit. He's after my spirit. But I'm here to tell you, we're not ignorant of the devices of the devil. Amen. But you've got to study to see them devices. And said, why did you marvel? And John said, man, I looked at that woman. She's all decked with silver and gold and pearls. I thought it was a real thing. Jesus said, oh, no, she ain't. She's got men seduced. Thinking they're going to heaven, but going to hell. When she come out, hell enlarged herself. You can't join the church of God. You've got to come and be born of the Holy Ghost of God. You got to be made a new creature, and greater is He that's in you than He that's in this world. You glad I come? Well, the Bible lets us know two women grinding, two in an airplane, two in a car, two in this, and they, and a man want to be raptured up and want to be left. Well, they'll take him to the cemetery. Isn't that amazing? Now, how many have ever heard that preach? Well, I'm going to put the zero on it tonight. There ain't no truth in it whatsoever. The Bible lets us know in Revelation 12 chapter, you'll find this beautiful woman, the bride of Christ. She came down. Jesus came down. 
amen, and build his church. And thank God when he comes again, he's going to take it back up. Amen. Let's leave it down here. Let's enjoy it. Let's love one another. Pray one for another. Bear one another's burden and have the great fellowship that the Holy Ghost wants us to have. And so I say tonight, amen. Luke makes it great, the great tribulation very plain. I want you to turn your Bible to Luke 21. Now here he writes to the Gentile. And he'll show us exactly what the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, amen, is. Amen, in Luke, uh, the 21st chapter and the 20th verse. Now, since you ain't got your Bible, amen, you'll have to take my word for it. But no, I'll go this way. This is why a blind man can worship just about like you can. Why? If you got the Holy Ghost, your spirit will bear witness with God's spirit that it is true. Amen. Make no mistake about that. Amen. Now here, Luke make it very plain, the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. When you shall see Jerusalem come past, amen, with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now who was the first enemy of the church? The Roman Empire. Anyway, she was in a political form. She wasn't in the spiritual form yet. No, no, no. They took Jesus to Pilate. And Pilate was running for a man, uh, a, big, a population of politics. And a man, Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. I find not one fault in him. And the Jews spoke up. And the Pilate asked him. And here's what, when I say this, it just revs me up in goose pimples. Amen. They took him to there and said, Amen. The Pharisees and Sadducees, Amen. Paul said, I find no fault in Jesus. Well, they said, We have a law. Come on. All the Pharisees and Sadducees were supposed to do was copy the law. But they took the preeminence and they put what they believe. This is where the thousand year reign come from. Now, some of you preachers don't know, I don't know, but you can go to the dictionary, I mean the library, and get the book of the Talmud. Amen, I read it over. They added to and took away the teachings of Jesus. Jesus walked up to him and said, what you sitting up there for? You ain't got no right to sit in Moses' seat. But see, amen, they said, we have a law. Church, we got to be careful. Come on now. I've seen them get so bad, amen, under their traditions that people just walk out and leave. Man, you're free tonight. You're free indeed. Yeah. Amen. But the question is to know when the Holy Ghost says move, you move. When the devil says stop, you stop. Because we can grieve and quench the spirit that we can grieve the life out of him. It's a time to move, and you need wisdom when you move. Come on, the Holy Ghost, I've seen it for years. It'll be working. It'll be convicting. And amen, somebody right in the middle of service, get up and kill the Spirit. Now, I'll, I'll wait on your amen, but it's true. Experience is the best teacher. There's a time for everything. But when the Holy Ghost is moving, convicting and convincing, you shut up and be still. Amen. So I want to say tonight, the Bible lets us know. Luke makes it very plain. The army, the Roman soldiers going into Jerusalem and destroy the city. This is the great tribulation. Now you'll probably not like it much more after I say a few things. But it's true. And it'll set you free. Verse 24, they killed 30 million Christians at Jerusalem. Now you stop and think that over. And the devil ain't laid a hand on any of us. And when somebody has a misfit, you won't speak to each other. Well, you ain't been through no tribulation yet. Come on. See, I'm going by experience. When you got 54 years under your belt, you got something. I've seen everything, amen, revival can bring. But I want to say tonight, 30 million killed under the hands of the Roman Empire. 
And Luke in the, tw in the verse 22 called it a day of vengeance. It wasn't the devil that done it. He gets blamed for a lot of things. But he didn't have nothing to do with this. It was a day of vengeance. And the Bible lets us know what a terrible thing took place. Jesus told them, when you see the abomination of desolation, flee to the mountains. And all who obeyed the word of God was saved. Now you ain't going to disobey God and walk around and get by with it. Not if you know better. And I want to say tonight, Josephus. Have you preachers ever read the book of Josephus? Well, he wasn't a Christian, but he's seen everything that happened. And I'm going to share with you what he said. I recommend any preacher that's called to go to the library and read the book of Josephus. He wrote, amen, in A.D. 75. That's what he wrote. He wasn't born again, but he was right there. He's seen everything that went on. The Roman soldiers went into the city. It looked like the Christian wasn't going to get out. And Josephus wrote that at the hand of God, he stopped the persecution for three days. And those who were saved got out. <laughs> That's the God we serve. You talk about a little sickness. Well, that ain't nothing compared to this. I told you, in the world, you're going to have tribulations. True Christianity calls for what? Tribulation, suffering. And if you ain't got the power of the resurrection in your soul, you ain't going to suffer. Come on. So I want to say tonight, amen. Look like the Christian wasn't going to get out and God moved on the soldiers. And amen for three days. They fled out of the city. And they went in and took the city. What a terrible time when God's vengeance is turned loose. What a terrible time it's going to be when God's love turns to wrath. And it's a coming. It's a coming. What a terrible time it will be when God's love turns to wrath. I think people think we just preach fairy tale stories. He destroyed it in the world, Noah. In the time of Noah, he wiped her clean. He opened up the earth and killed 3,000 people because they raised up against Moses. They killed John the Baptist. They killed the only one that could save him. But when we face the wrath of God, there ain't no escape. You die without God tonight, you're headed for God's wrath. Amen. Let's sit up straight tonight and get it straight. The wrath of God is going to be poured out one day. And I see men and women come into service and just treat the Holy Ghost any way they want to. The Holy Ghost is the greatest friend that you'll ever have. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. He'll stick closer to you. He loves you more than your husband. So I want to say tonight, the Bible lets us know when God comes vengeance, you lost without God, you're going to the lake of fire. Now listen to me carefully. Jesus said in Revelation, a man, a man away from God, Amen. Tonight, he's away from God for a time. But at the second coming of Christ, you're away from God. You'll be separated from God forever. There'll be no hope for you. Tonight is the night of hope. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time to do something. And I want to say to you tonight, if you're born again, you're the first one knows it. I was there when it happened. Nobody had to tell me to say. But I went down to all there. I was conviction. They got to pray it over me and I said, stop. Let me pray myself. 
And when I prayed, amen, I was wide awake when I got up in that altar. And that's the experience everyone needs, I guess. Now, what was Jesus' attitude when he walked into the city? I want you to turn there in Luke 19, 41. Hey, man, listen to what his attitude was. Listen to me carefully, you that believe in the millennium. You that believe the kingdom of God is going to be set on earth. Oh, yes, there's some of you here might believe that. You might have been taught that. But you get it quick. The kingdom of God is not seen with the natural eye. It's righteousness, it's joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. So listen to what the Word of God said. Amen. In Luke, what did I say the scripture was? Luke 19, 41. Listen to what it says here. Here's the words of Christ. Amen. Let me get my glasses not steamed up. And when he was come near, he beheld a city. And he wept. And he wept. Now, when you think in your own intelligence, why would Jesus weep if he knew out in the future that the Jews was going to be saved? He wouldn't have wept. He would have rejoiced. That's all right, boys. You don't have to accept me now, but out in the future, you'll be coming to me. But he wept. He wept over the city. Now, if you go to Daniel 10, chapter, when Gabriel come down to give the, uh, uh, the message to Daniel, it come from heaven. It didn't come from man. Gabriel come down, and amen, he gave Daniel the prophecy. 10th chapter of Daniel. Write it down, you, you can see. Check me right on. And amen, when Gabriel come down and give him the prophecy of the, of the abomination of desolation, the Bible said he got so sick, he wept and prayed for three weeks. Now, wouldn't you think out in the future that God was going to save the literal Jews that Daniel would have wept? Daniel would have rejoiced. Jesus would have rejoiced. And then he says here, he wept for three full weeks. He didn't need a bite. He loved his countrymen so bad. He knew the end was coming. And so, I say tonight, if Jerusalem... It's got a special favor in the eyes of God. He wouldn't have wept. But the preachers are preaching that. Amen. And if God has respect to person, he commits sin. So I say tonight, amen, we need to look. Look clear and let it sink into our hearts and our minds. And I bet you will not let me preach for another six weeks. No, I'm just kidding now. That's my boy. But I want to say this tonight. Daniel's attitude when Gabriel came down knew it was the end of old Israel. We got a new Israel. And there's a few that escaped old Israel. Apostle Paul escaped it. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John escaped the old Israel. But there's a lot of them didn't. So I want to say tonight, the Bible lets us know, old Jerusalem would have been saved in the future if God had the special favor. You understand this tonight, and the, some of the religions don't believe it. What you sow, you're going to reap. And now she's reaping. She's a reaping, boy. She have a, had the very prince of God in her midst. She's seen all the miracles. She's seen the blinded eyes open. She's seen the dead raised. But what was her attitude? We want a king. We want a king here on this earth. But it'll never happen. I say tonight, the Bible lets us know, history as well of the word of God tells us, the slaughter was so great, they piled the bodies up five foot deep. 
You couldn't even walk in the city of Jerusalem. Now I'm talking about the wrath of God. Five foot deep, Josephus said, they piled them up. You couldn't even go through the city. The Bible lets us know, and Josephus lets us know, they killed the priest first, and that's what they're after, the pastors. The devil's after him. And he ain't going to quit. And he's after you. Let's get close to God. And stay close. He lets us know, amen, the one soldiers walk right in the temple. Now here's what Josephus said. There was two big armed gates there. Took 26 men to open one side of the gate. Josephus said they opened on their own accord. Ain't nothing to keep God out. Not one thing. He lets us know, amen. They killed the priest first, hung them on the cross, and Josephus said it was guided by the hand of God. Men were building their own caskets and crawling into them, taking off their sandals and gnawing them of cause of being hungry. And I see us today, we go and leave food on the table. Our eyes are bigger than our belly. Come on, we're sport people. Don't you think we ain't? But I want to say, amen, by the grace of God, God is love. And he loves us. But he hates sin. He still hates sin. How can you live in sin and be a Christian that which hung him on the cross? You're born again, you hate sin. I hate the very spot of it. Why? Because what it done to me. It robbed me of my life and my family. The things I could enjoy, I couldn't. I was bound. But now I'm set free. 45 years I've been set free. And I'm enjoying the things I always wanted. Don't take Christianity light. You serve God when you want to. Go to church when you want to. You need a good experience. Because the very moment you ain't here, that's the message you need. Your heaven ain't come behind your feet yet. You ain't made it. It's only those who press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So God is love. But when God's wrath is turned out, and some people say, why this happened? 10, 15 years ago, we're sitting there having coffee and it come on the news. Maybe some of you remember it. Here's a lady who was married to this man. He was in the service. She had three little kids. And amen, she got up and she was under this religion. The one that you have to feel and shake and all of this stuff to get you going. So she gets up that morning. She turns the water on the tub. She fills the tub up and takes the three children to drown them. Remember that? Yeah. They asked her, why in the world did you do that? She said, well, I was afraid I had the mark of the beast. Now, you watch that teaching. You watch that teaching. And she said, I was afraid I had the mark of the beast. So I killed him. And I found out where she was going to church. She couldn't control her spirit. Any spirit that you can't control is of the devil. Amen. And so, amen, she killed all three of them. We're living in a world. They're killing their mothers. They're killing their fathers. Children that are 15 14, you know where it all stems from? Mom and dad didn't train them up in the ways of God. If you've had a mother or father that will take you to church and raise you up and give principalities in your life, you've got something going for you. They're heathens. You ever see such a day we're living? It's going to get worse and you better prepare for it. So I want to say tonight, 
Jesus said in this scripture in Matthew 24, brother will kill the brother, and sisters will kiss, uh, kill children. Amen. What was the answer? What's the answer of all of it? I said amen. The Bible lets us know Matthew 12, 49. Here's the answer to it. In Matthew 12, 49. Amen. And what a, what a thing Jesus told him. Now remember, he preached to his own generation here. Not you. I'm preaching to you now. But here Jesus had his own people. In Matthew 12, 43. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you pray for me? Lift me up to God. Amen. Matthew 12, 43. Now here's the answer, amen, to the Jews' nation, and here's the answer to the American nation. We got the answers in the book. But listen to what it says. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, amen, he walketh through dry places. And that's what the devil's looking for. He's looking for a dry place in your heart. In your heart. And if there's a dry place there, he'll move right in. But if you keep the water running, if you let the Holy Ghost freely come through you and work within you now, thank God he can't come in. There'll never be a dry place if the river's running. But listen to the teachings of Christ. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Now you can buy rest, but you can't buy. I mean, you can buy sleep, but you can't find rest. Buy rest. Yeah, you can buy everything on the drugstore to go to sleep. But you can't buy rest. Rest comes from the gospel. And so I want to say that I listen to what he's saying here. They seek a rest and find none. Then he said, I will return to whom which he has come. He find it empty. He find it swept. And he find it garnished. That's what false religion will do for you. They'll just sweep the sin off a little bit. They'll garnish you up and they'll make you feel real good. But the house is not cleaned up. Amen. The only way the house will ever get cleaned up is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He'll cleanse us from all sin and cast our sin as far as the east to the west and never no more to be remembered. Lord. So he finds it swept and garnished. And then what does he say? Then said he, I will return to my house from which I came out. And when it is come, he find it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he. Now here's the problem of the world and false religion. When you turn down the gospel, seven other spirits will wicked in themselves, they'll enter in and dwell there. And that man is worse than the first. Even so, it shall be also to this generation and that's the one he preached to the Jews so I want to say tonight I believe when the house gets cleaned up the Holy Ghost moves in <laughs> brother when my heart is cleansed with the blood of Christ through faith and he cleanses me from all sin he don't let me walk around powerless Amen, because the Spirit don't give life. It's the Holy Ghost that quickens. It's the Holy Ghost of God that raises us from the dead state of sin. And by His Spirit, we're baptized into one body. If I don't have the Holy Ghost, when I get saved, I'm opened up to every spirit of this world. So I'm going to finish for long. Now I'm going to go to the prophecy. And I can't give you all of it because it's too terrible. Amen. But I so pray that it'll wake us to the point that when we leave this building, you watch them spirits. You see, amen, when she walked around and said, these are the men of the Most High God, these are the men of the Most High God, and Paul rebuked that, many preachers would have accepted her. Now, I want to say this politely and clear. If Babylon, you let the Babylonians come in. And if they'll take truth, we want them. 
But if they won't take the church of God message, they'll affect you. I knew I wouldn't get no amens on that, but it's so anyway. Come on. And I want to say this right behind that. Jesus wasn't a mixer. He was a separator. You read Matthew 13, chapter, the seventh parable, the last parable. He sent forth his preachers. He likened the kingdom as a net. Drop it into the sea. The sea is people, tongues, and nation. But every once in a while in this seven seal message, raise the net up. And we'll separate the good and the bad. The preachers are supposed to do that. And when you preach the gospel, it'll do the separation. Yeah, man, don't have to put no hands on you at all. No, just preach the church of God message. Preach against sin. Preach about the church. Lift her up to where she's supposed to be. And God will take care of his people. If we honor God's word, he'll honor us. So, the Bible lets us know they, could have, they rejected the one who could clean up the house. And he turned right around and here's what he said. Your house is left to you desolate. One is not a Jew outwardly, but one is a Jew inwardly. Circumcised of the spirit. Now you women ought to rejoice over this one. Why? Wasn't too long you wasn't even allowed to vote. Amen. Amen. And so amen. When Jesus come, he preached the gospel and said, they neither male nor female in the kingdom of God. Secondly, a woman can't be circumcised. If the woman's in the church, she's got to be born again, circumcised of the heart. That's why he let the women in. So we see tonight, I want to go to the prophecy, Deuteronomy 28. Amen. I'd like to start with the 49th verse. Now you remember that eagle I read to you in Matthew 24. Remember I read that word? Okay, let's go get it. In Deuteronomy, amen, the 28th chapter, the 49th verse. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar off. That was the old Roman Empire. Here's a prophecy. Amen. The Lord said to bring a nation against thee from afar from the end of the earth, as swift as the what? The eagle fly it. There's your emblem of the Roman Empire. She's got a segment. On her breast, the eagle. I read that to you on Matthew 24. And then he said, A nation of fierce countenance shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And they shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, thy fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed. Which also shall not leave, the, leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or increase of the kind or flocks of the sheep, until he had restored, destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down. Wherein thou trustest throughout all the land, he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all the land which the Lord God had given thee. And thou shalt, amen, eat the fruit of thine own body. Camelism. Come on. I'm reading it to you out of the prophecy. And you that say God's love, here's a wrath. Amen. Thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and daughters. I've seen them snare their nose up. I've eaten groundhog for years. And that's all we much about had to eat back years ago. Groundhogs and squirrels and rabbits. Well, I wouldn't eat that. You get hungry and you'll eat. And you don't know what hunger is. You eat at 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock you're still hungry. Every week I was so nice. Huh? But listen to the prophecy of it. And I was amazed. And I said, Lord, I've wrestled this message for three weeks. 
wrestle with the devil over it. I can't make it as bad as it is. Yeah, this is God's doing. It wasn't the devil's. Listen to what it says here. Thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own blood, and the flesh of thy sons and daughters, which the Lord thy God had given thee, in the seeds and in the straightness, wherein thine enemies shall distress thee. So that the man is tender among you, and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. And right around, he'll get you. Come on. I taught you this in Matthew 24. Let's go a little farther. And then the Bible says, so The man that's tender among you, very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his own children. Awful hungry, wasn't he? Huh? And then he goes on to say, Amen. And whom he shall eat, because he had nothing left in the seas and in the straightness, wherein thy enemies shall distress thee in all thy gate. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground of delicacy and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom, and towards her son and towards her daughter. Finished. And towards her young one that cometh out from between her legs. Think of that. Now, friend, when the wrath of God is turned loose, there's no place to hide. No place. You've got a golden opportunity tonight. And you've sat under the Holy Ghost for a long time, and you've treated him just the way you wanted to. Well, you just mark this down. God said, I'll choose your delusions. Amen. When he comes again, the door of mercy is closed. He's not going to deal with sinners. You're going to the hell that you die lost now. And when your judgment comes, you're going to the lake of fire. Amen. So I want to say this tonight. Toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet and toward her children, which she shall bear, or she shall eat them. For one of all things sickly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee in thy gates. If thou wilt not observe to do God's word, you're headed for trouble. You're either for him or against him. If you've had an opportunity to be saved, you love darkness rather than you do light. And your deeds are evil. Come on. If you've had an opportunity to sit under the gospel and repent of your sin and ask God to forgive you and you have refused that, you're headed for trouble. Now, how many believe what a priest? Amen? So I finish by this by saying, if thou not wilt observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. They've lifted the fear of God off of our young generation. The beginning of the wisdom is the fear of God. But amen, we have watered it down and diluted it that it makes room for everybody to love. It sure does. But brother, when you truly love God, you'll love the truth. It'll set you free from all false religions. Amen. It will heal your soul. It will heal your body. And we, through the power of the Holy Ghost of God, just turn loose. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken by Daniel the prophet, flee to the mountains. And that was just a slaughter. I pray my children are lost. I don't know if you have children that are lost or not. But you mark this one thing down. You better live upright and straight. Because they could, their blood could be on your hands. And when you lie to somebody, you're a liar. Amen. And there's no liars or enter in to the kingdom of God.
Let us stand. I didn't do too bad tonight. Did I? It's just about 10 minutes to 8. I thought it was later than that. Now, now let's, not, not, let's not fuss around with this tonight. You're either saved or lost. I'm up here with a straight, straight back like a saw long. You're either saved or you're lost. And if you're saved, you're the first one got the message. But if you ain't saved, you need to come. Because God had no respected person back then. And if he done that back then, what do you think is going to be at the judgment? If you're saved tonight, there's one thing you do know. You're saved and you're ready to meet God. If you're not like that, you need to come and get this proudness out of your heart and this stiff neck. You're too proud to pray. Come on. Well, you think I'm going to go down that altar and pray in front of people and shed a few tears? I had a sister-in-law one time and joined the church. And after I got saved, she came over to the house and visited us and said, How, what does your church do? I said, well, tonight I'm going foot washing. She said, what? I said, I'm going to church tonight. We're going to wash feet. She said, you mean you take your shoes off? Now, come on. She was in religion. I'm telling you, see. She said, you mean you actually take the shoes off? and put their feet in the pan and wash it? I said, absolutely. Well, she said, I wouldn't even think a think a think about I wouldn't do that for nothing. I said, well, you ain't saved. <laughs> See, this, this takes all the proudness out of it. God can't use you if you're proud. It comes before the fall. Can you see your children lost? Can you see your neighbor lost? Think about it. What I preach to you tonight is a reality. It's not a prayer tale. And here's the way I think tonight. I think we care not how long you've been saved, how much you claim to be sanctified, how much Holy Ghost you've got. I think we all need to find the altar tonight and pray. Pray till we pray. And when we get our prayer done, and Henry Howard used to say, when you do your own praying, you know it's done. Well, somebody said, I went to the altar 20 years ago, but what about now? I'm not going to beg people, not after this message. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit of God knows when to move and not to move. I ain't going to beg people to come. But friend, we're living in a reality. The fear of God has been lifted off of our younger generation. Amen. The fear of God has been lifted off to this nation. And we ask you tonight, you come. You come. Father, we look to thee once again tonight. We thank you. We're here to please you. And we've done the best we can. And now we know that we'll stand at the judgment. And we'll give an account of this message. And those who have sat under the message will give an account of what they do to it. Father, our nation's in trouble. Homes are in trouble. Everywhere we look around, there's trouble. But in the midst of trouble, we have a refuge. We have a strength. And we have one who will help us in the time of trouble. We pray that you would deal with hearts and lives. Amen. Deal with them to the place that if we see ourselves lost, that we can see ourselves saved. Rebuke the powers of the enemy. May the precious Holy Spirit of God reprove, convince, and convict. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Brother Jimmy. Would you flee from sin and serve the Lord? Be ready when He comes. He will soon.
me make this statement tonight. And it's a very important statement. If I was to go to Middletown to burn the city down, amen, I wouldn't use wet wood. Isn't that common? I'm going in the city here at Post Town and I'm going to burn this little city down. I wouldn't use wet wood. I'd use dry wood. But what I've seen in the last two years, everybody's wet. They're filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Laodicea church said, we need them nothing. But Jesus said, you're wretched, poor. Now, how many of you tonight, amen, are filled with the Holy Ghost? Just ask, ask, ask yourself the question. When do I get it? I told you when you get it. But there's a dry place in your life? Huh? If everybody was wet tonight, we'd have revival for a month. If everybody was filled with the Holy Ghost and the kingdom of God first, you wouldn't have to uh, call revival. We'd be in revival all the time. But amen, we claim and we claim, but amen, if we're going to burn the city down, amen, we don't need wet wood. We just need people who will be honest with their soul. I'm dry. I never testify. I never stand up. Give God the praise. Amen. But to have revival, to have revival starts within, each individually. So you remember this tonight. As you go along your journey, you better keep the water and river running. Because I'm here to tell you, he's looking for a dry place in your life, and it's there he's coming in. And after he enters in, amen, with one dry place, he'll get another one. So we want to sing another verse. Amen. The end of time is near. Be ready when we come. Soon the Lord to judge us shall appear. Be ready when we come. I'm ready. Be ready. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
God. What a message. What a message. You know, if I was lost tonight, I don't think I would sleep. I thank God for the burden that God gives us. I don't want to lose that. You know, this week has been a powerful, powerful week. And we never know the seeds that have been planted. We don't want revival to end tonight. We want God to take us forward. We will continue to see the work prosper and see souls coming into the kingdom of God. So I believe this is just the beginning. I thank God for the timing of this revival. I thank God for every one of our speakers. And Brother Denzel, we thank God for you. Now you know why I call him the wise one. He's got a depth of the word, but more importantly, he's got a burden. And he loves the Lord with all of his heart. May the Lord bless you. Keep looking up, folks. Jesus is coming back. Let's be ready. Let's have our lights burning. Let's be watchful and prayerful. And let's do all we can do every day for the Lord. All right, Brother Brian, if you come and close us in prayer. Make a determination in your heart to be here Wednesday. You'll be the one to miss out. I pray each and every one of you will be here and bring someone. You know, I've heard a lot of times that people say, why don't you ever go to church? They say, because nobody's ever asked me. Your neighbor might never know because you've never asked them. Invite them. Would it surprise you to have a pew full of people just because you invited them? They're looking for something, and we know who that something is. So let's share with everybody we know. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the message. I thank you for just how you speak to us. I thank you for your word. Every question that we have in life is answered in your word, and you've given that to us. I pray that we would not take it for granted. I, take it, I, I say, let's not take it for granted. Let's just make a stand that we're not going to take it for granted. And let's not take for granted when the doors are open in church to fellowship and to grow closer to you. I pray that we would talk to you every day. And that we would pray and ask for your guidance, your wisdom, and your knowledge. Go with us tonight. Bring us back Wednesday, ready to hear what you have for us. Because if we come expecting, I know without a shadow of a doubt, you will fulfill every need that we have. Thank you for all that you do. Get everyone home safe, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.